So this is the first spicy question I have in mind, right? Because I saw the old Turbo 8 or the Turbo Saga of the old TypeScript thing. And I have just one question for you before we dive into the specifics of Turbo, right? Like, can you really build quality JavaScript software without TypeScript? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a very uh, hot topic, right? Uh, I, my answer is... What's up, everyone? Welcome to yet another Teach Kevin Your Thing session. In today's session, I am going to be having someone from one of my favorite makers of software, 37 Signals. Um, is going to come teach us. Um, it's going to it's going to be like a mind shift from XPAs, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. But before I ramble <laughs> too far, how you doing, Jorge? Hey, Kelvin, how's it going? Yeah, good, good, good. Um, like I said, you are from a company I've, I've been admiring for years. I just love how you build software and your pragmatic thinking and everything. So before we get into that, um, could you just introduce yourself? Tell us who Hoggy is, what you've been doing, what you currently do, and a fun fact about you. Um, sure. So uh, my name is Jorge Manrubia. Um... I, I work at 37 Signals as a principal programmer. I've been working at 37 Signals for five years now, almost five years, not, not five years, but almost five years. Um, uh, first, I was part of the security infrastructure and performance team, and now I'm part of the product team. Uh, lately, I've been uh, leading the, the, the technical side of the, the Hey Calendar, the, the product we just launched in, in January. Um, the calendar for for hey and um and yeah before that i well i i've been involved in many different projects uh i worked on uh active record encryption which is mm. uh a feature in rails active record for encrypting uh data you know at the application level before touching the database uh i've been also involved in turbo uh 8 morphing the using morphing in turbo 8 which is an extraction from from the calendar work and uh yeah that's um that's pretty much it um and what what was the last part like something fun about me yeah it's the fun fact about you one fun, <laughs> the fact. fun fact is that one fun fact is that uh yeah, I'm always planning to exercise, but I exercise very little. That's like a, a, a recurring theme in my life. <laughs> I got <it>. Okay. <laughs> Probably we need to do... Okay, so um, that's very interesting for a fact. I, for me, I exercise less than I planned, but I do do the exercise. So like... As soon as I get out from bed, I'll just like do like um, some 20 to 30 push-ups and sit-ups and just, you know, get the blood going and okay. all. Yeah, but um, yeah, we definitely should should see how we could both exercise more. So yeah, thank you for that amazing intro. And I was just curious, you know, how you, how your journey from like performance at um, 37 Signals to like product and really leading an ambitious project like the hey calendar because it is ambitious i use the hey calendar today it's my primary calendar and mm. the novelty of it all is just like whoa you all hooked at 37 signal so walk me through that like <laughs> what from performance sure. to products sure uh yeah i love to hear that so um yeah, so when I first joined 37 Signals, I joined the, the uh, security infrastructure and performance team. It was not only performance, but all sorts of infrastructure staff. So no product okay. user-facing staff, but mm -hmm. internal infrastructure projects. Um, I joined, uh, I mean, through my career, I've done both a lot of back-end and front-end work. So I'm mm -hmm. equally comfortable on both sides of the equation. So when I joined 37, I had tried to join 37 Signals several times before I, I made it. Uh, like, I think I applied five times. There, there is an article which is called How I Got Hired by Basecamp that I Ooh. wrote in 2019. So you can read, you can learn yeah. more about my story there. But essentially, uh, I applied to the security infrastructure and performance uh, open opening. And uh, I think it was a 
good fit for me, uh, for my skills. I, I worked and learned a lot working there. Uh, but at some point, as I was saying, I was, I mean, I had been like you, I had been admiring uh, 37 Signals like my whole career. I loved their products. Uh, I loved the products. I used the products before I joined in the, before I joined the company. And I was really key. I was really missing like product work, like personally, um, because I was missing like, you know, working with a designer, working on user facing features that, that was missing. Like it's not something I was quite happy in the SIP team, but I was missing that part. So, um, eventually I asked for, Hey, listen, can I do some product work? Like just for, for a change, uh, just to see how I fit and cause I'm, I'm missing it. And, and I was given like this gift of uh, working on the Hey Calendar. Like uh, it was like, oh yeah, we ha- we are starting a new product. Do you want to to join? And I was like, wow, it was a. I wasn't expecting it, and it was like a gift, as I said. And um, for different circumstances, I was like, I ended up leading the the technical the technical uh, side of the. I mean, there is like a, the mobile side of the equation, which uh, mm-hmm. Jay Oms is the, the team lead. And I was like on the web and server side of the equation. I was uh, leading that team. And yeah, it was quite an, an, an experience. Like uh, I went from, it was like my first, I mean, I had done some smaller product features in the past in the company uh, because, mm-hmm. you know, we all work, you know, you know everywhere. Yeah, 37 full teams, stack. So, yeah, full stack. We, wor- we work everywhere. So, and I had done like, product features here and there but it was like my first like, big thing and it was a product it was a whole product not a, yeah. not a cycle project or anything so yeah it was quite an quite an experience yeah that's like at a certain point you just want to have that feel of you know okay yes the work i do in security and performance and infrastructure matters but you know building something like i personally i'm excited about like the i think most of my work is being managed by 37 signals products from base nice. camp to hey mail to hey calendar it's just all like i think that's most like i spent most times at work in those apps so it's really really uh, interesting to see how it, the need to build something user facing got you into like an ambitious project like hey calendar and you knocked it out of the park. I know David was singing praises, and that's something because he was literally blown by how you were able to do this, right? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think it it turned out like uh, extremely well. Like, uh, I mean, it was it was challenging. It, uh, the, the calendar was challenging, and well, a bunch of folks were involved and, and worked like uh, uh, hard for for getting this through the door. And uh, I think it, it was great teamwork. And for me personally, it was a, a great, great experience uh, mm-hmm. working with 37 Signals designers, for example. It was like my, my first time working with them. They, I, I really look up to them like a lot, how they design products, how they make product, products happen. So being part of that for me was a career milestone, honestly. And, mm. and yeah, it was, it, was, um, it was very interesting. I, I won't say it was also challenging. It was not... It, all like of course uh, it should be a, a happy straight path yeah. of uh, you know of, of success it was like there were a lot of challenges a lot of uh, you know yeah. uh, kind of pressures with the launch and everything and decisions we had to make and of course like uh, shipping things is is challenging uh, and it should be oh. challenging mm-hmm. that's something yes, it should. i learned yeah 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 it's yeah. it's it's kind of like the old saying that it could be simple but it's not easy like <laughs> yeah yeah, so even though you wanted this challenge, but of course it's a challenge, right? It's gonna be hard. It's gonna test your your skill sets. It's gonna test your like. It's gonna just give you a, a lot of like. You're gonna grow <laughs> all through oh, the yeah. process. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, I, something I've learned from. Uh, I mean, I've learned many things from from. Jason was like the uh, Jason and and Scott Upton were like the leading the design side of this, and and Jason was ultimately making calls. And you know this uh, shipping culture, like I was already familiar with, but this shipping culture of setting deadlines, uh, mm-hmm. uh, managing scope, but setting deadlines, uh, making decisions, making calls, like 
wow, it's like uh, seeing that in action. I mean, it's easy to understand uh, at a re- rational level, but it's super hard to put that into practice. And, and I think course. they are great. They are great mm-hmm. at doing that. Uh, the company, they, they're, 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 uh, it's a company that really nails that, that shipping culture. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that's true because I know I've also been influenced by how you all ship with Shape Up. Like, I just feel like there's a lot of um, novelty that comes out of um, the Seven Signals in how you build, how you work, and the people there is just really, really amazing. And yeah, so I think. At the heart of the Hey Calendar is this thing called Turbo, right? Which really, you know. So, when we were talking about this session, I uh, remember saying, build fast SPAs with Turbo. And you were like, no, Turbo don't really let you build SPAs in the SPA sense. It's another way of building web apps. And I'm like, okay, I think my, my mind has been so confirmed so the, there's no other approach to building web applications than SPAs. And I want that to be shattered today. So can you <laughs> tell me the ethos and the premise of Turbo? Like, why is it non-SPA? How is it different? And, you know, what is the appeal of this thing? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so um, Turbo is like the... Well, Turbo, currently, like the whole uh, umbrella of things that Rails offers for the front end is called uh, Hotwire. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but Turbo is kind of the main component um, of, of Hotwire. And the, the philosophy of Turbo is to, um, and it's very important to highlight that if you observe Turbo from some altitude, Turbo is. Uh, Philosophies enhancing the um, how the traditional web works. Okay, mm-hmm. so if you think of the traditional web model where a web server and a web browser uh, interchange HTML documents over mm-hmm. um, HTTP and stateless protocol, that's how the web works or has traditionally worked, and that's what Turbo aims to enhance. Um, and this is important because. You know, if you are, well, you come from the single page application world. Uh, the single page application world is kind of a departure of how the web works in the sense that typically uh, applications, single page applications have interchanged um, data in JSON format. And uh, web applications are running JavaScript with, uh, that knows how to render, uh, how to transform uh, that JSON yeah. data into HTML. Mm-hmm. So that's yes. that's kind of a that's kind of a departure of how the the web has worked traditionally. And the the premise of Turbo is that in terms of programming happiness and productivity, the traditional web model is better. Okay. Mm. So uh, the idea is, uh, or the goal is to offer um, uh, great fidelity uh, at the user interface level without having to abandon that model because it's more productive than the uh, the, the single-page application alternatives, okay? So that's the, the premise of, of, of Turbo and the philosophy of Turbo. And then we can discuss, like, the specifics of the technology, but that's the, that's the idea, yeah. And it's very important it, to highlight it, yeah. Mm, yeah, I, I think so, too, because I feel like there's been a, a couple of moves, even from the old pro SPA ecosystem, a.k.a. we JavaScript boys, we are the... We are the one who's taking the web away from how we're supposed to work with the XPAs and JSON and everything we do. But there's been this move back, and I don't know if you know um, the project from eBay, Marco. It's almost like the same idea, which is just enhance HTML, right? So they've okay. been using it, yeah, they've been using it at eBay for like forever. And now with React Server components, it feels like the same, you know, HTML is good. Let's just make that our foundation and let's go from it, like from that point. And it's interesting to see all this and to think about Turbo right now, again, because I've been confirmed by SPS, it's hard to imagine. But um, I have a couple of questions because I read the the release article right so this is the first spicy question i have in mind right because i saw the old turbo 8 or the turbo saga of the old typescript thing 
And I have just one question for you before we dive into the specifics of Turbo, right? Like, can you really build quality JavaScript software without TypeScript? Because the TypeScript world will help us believe that there's no way you can make maintainable JavaScript and yada, yada, yada without TypeScript. Huh. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. So, can you really build quality JavaScript software without TypeScript? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a very. Uh... <laughs> Hot topic, right? Uh, I, my answer is yes. I mean, you can. Uh, I think you can. Uh, listen, the question, like, if you generalize the question, is that can you build maintainable um, software with um, um, dynamically typed language mm-hmm. like JavaScript without types? Yeah. And the answer is yes. And it's not. This is like not a subjective opinion in the sense that you know we are using Rails at thirty-seven signals, uh, for example, um, Basecamp. Is built in Ruby. The server is built in Ruby. Ruby doesn't have types. I mean, you don't use explicit types uh, when you are writing Ruby. Recently, they added like some support for types so that e- editors can show code completion and things like that. But the, the, you, you don't manage. It's like JavaScript, okay? When you declare a variable or a, a function argument, you don't need to declare the, the type. Mm-hmm. And 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 you know that's um, and the software we build is maintainable in the sense that we evolve it and it, they sustain like multi million dollar uh, bis- a multi million dollar business. Okay, so it's mm-hmm. it's, it's totally course. sustainable. So uh, JavaScript is the same, and I think like the using TypeScript or JavaScript uh, debate. It's highly. It's one of those things that we developers like to uh, discuss about things that are uh, highly subjective, and try to uh, and try to make that objective. Okay, so it's like, uh, what's your taste? What's your what, what? What do you like? Do you like types or you don't like types? And from there, you can rationalize however you want. Like I've seen even scientific articles trying to determine whether types. <laughs> Helps uh, help you to capture bugs or not, or uh, I don't know. I know that a lot of people love TypeScript. I, I know that a lot of people don't love TypeScript. He, at Thirty Seven Signals, we don't love TypeScript right now. Like actually, we removed TypeScript because we wanted when we were working in the calendar, we wanted to start upstreaming all the morphine stuff, and none of none of us uh, like TypeScript. Okay, so it was like, okay, why are we working with something we don't like? So uh, we decided to mix it, but um, I mean, for me, it's easier to convince me that, listen, I love TypeScript and it makes me more productive. I get that. I believe you. But if you, if you come with a general argument of the kind, oh, this is better for everyone because software is more maintainable, like I, I don't agree with that. Like my experience, like, and I have quite a bit of experience in the field is like doesn't uh, back that up. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I strongly agree with you. I, I just feel like at a certain point, it's just weird, right? So I have this saying that I don't like absolutes because the thing with absolutes, you could only have two states. You can be absolutely right or absolutely wrong, right? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the when you say that TypeScript is for everything, not really. <laughs> right so it's it's all about it's the same reason why we have a lot of programming languages in the world right because it's different people different school of thought and different process and how they think about software and how they really author said software right so at a certain point we just have to be mature and just let people use what they like and build the way they want because that's the whole idea of the web right like absolutely would, yeah yeah absolutely. I would hate to see a world where everybody uses TypeScript because I have tried. It doesn't work for me. I tried, really. I tried because, you know, they say you're missing out. No, you're going to write bugs. And yeah, I tried. It was just like, nah. I just like JavaScript. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if it was TypeScript that was existing in the place of JavaScript before, um, when I had to move from PHP to JavaScript, I would not have made that move because it will be leaving something really good as PHP and just to go to TypeScript. It's, it would not be have been appealing for me because there's an appeal to dynamic languages. It's not a flaw. It's the nature of the paradigm. So you just got to use it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
actually yeah that's the thing like what you mentioned like the flow is so important like your your preference what 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 makes your uh you know brain click and that's so subjective like in the i've seen parameters of all colors and uh like some people like something some people some like some other things my problem is when as you said people you know go to absolutes and if you go to absolutes then you can at least you can uh see the data and and i said like for example 37 signals and because this is also uh, we, we have like plenty of discussions like this in the rest community about techniques and technologies and people say oh don't do that and we say oh we do this but if you want something objective like look for you know real companies using these technologies or these techniques and see if it's working for them because if it's working for them it kinds of objectively denies the premise that you know not using typescript is bad for sub quality things like that but that kind mm-hmm. of argument is not uh, you know validated by anything you are making an opinion like generalizing an opinion and trying to uh, disguise it as a fact <laughs> i don't yeah. like that I don't like me, that, but... yeah, me too. <laughs> like, I, I really literally frown at that because it's just so not true. Because if I'm doing X, it's working for me. You're trying to tell me that X don't work for me. But I know it's working because I've been doing it for years. So how am I in pain? How am I the one that is the outcast? I don't know. Totally. It's working. <laughs> it's it's just it's weird. I feel like these things are mostly probably just marketing, really, because in actual facts, some of the opinions that are being mainstream wouldn't even be if not for like marketing. But in terms of actual usage, it's just different because, um, like I used to say, the web dev different in real life than on Twitter or X, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, there. It's just a bubble, but in the real world, we have different use cases. Like, like the the things that you all pioneered, like um, the whole okay, you can host your own service. And they'll be like, no, you can't do that. You have to do the right. cloud. Like, you right. cannot build scalable software without the cloud. You, 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 and, and you're doing yeah. it right. And you you exited the cloud with a multi um billion dollars company. And you all are good. I still use the product. There are no downtimes. I'll be like, where yeah. is the truth? <laughs> where is right. the truth? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah. Like, the bottom line is that you should be wary of people that can with very, uh, you know, uh, with a fundamentalist tone in, in mm-hmm. their advice. Like, never ever do this. Never ever do that. Always do this. If you are doing that, it's wrong. If you do that, you can't call yourself <laughs> a programmer. I mean, you get... <laughs> all this nonsense like every day uh, so you you should be wary of, of, of it yeah yeah okay. i am wary i am wary so thank you for that really so um back to turbo right so you've explained is enriching html right yeah so the first question i have is how do you do this because i know in spa is one of the drivers right is ajax like uh, xml shr yeah. right so what is the because you say it is hot wire, which is HTML over the wire, like that's the ecosystem of tools. So Tobol itself, what role does it play in all this? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um the thing is that in order to explain how Turbo does uh its thing, mm-hmm. it's probably good if I can I have um an okay, can I take share my screen? Um, yeah, for sure. Please, please, let's do it. Uh, do you have to? Uh... Yeah, you got to click share screen, and you should. Yeah, share to do screen. That. Okay, share screen. Yeah, uh, window entire screen. I'm going uh-huh. to share my entire screen. Okay. Inception. Okay. I like it. Yeah, Inception. <laughs> Are you seeing like uh, slide yeah, here? Yeah, I see. Uh, I see keynotes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is a keynote and this is a mm-hmm. slide from mm-hmm. a presentation that I delivered in Rails World uh, oh. last uh, last year. And yeah. this is a good a good like entry point to understand how Turbo uh, operates because Turbo as I said is about uh, enhancing how the web works, but there is like this developer happiness part of the equation which is very important, okay? So Turbo mm-hmm. is about, you know, offering a great programming model that lets you be very productive and at the same time improving like the the 
responsiveness or the fidelity of your user interfaces. And I'm going to show you uh, all these elements working in the Hey Calendar, okay? So that you can see yes. how they work. But um, uh, let me briefly introduce, introduce like the different parts, okay? So the baseline, the backbone of Turbo is this one here, what I'm calling body, body replacement, okay? Okay. Uh, so if you're using uh, a regular web page and you are clicking things around and you are submitting forms and getting redirected to all the other uh, URLs, so how a browser behaves is that it grabs, like imagine that you click, click on a link, the browser is going to make an HTTP request and grab the new HTML document, and it's going to replace the current document in the in the in the in the page, the current document you are seeing with the new document. Okay, so the problem with that is that uh, it's kind of slow because the browser has to reprocess all the CSS and the JavaScript that uh, comes with the page, even if it cached. The browser has to uh, reevaluate all the JavaScript again when the new document gets uh, loaded. Mm -hmm. So something that Turbo uh, and the, the same for the CSS. Okay. So something that Turbo does on your behind is that just by installing Turbo without dropping any line of code, Turbo is going to intercept all those uh, navigation requests when submitting forms or clicking links around, uh, they are going to intercept those uh, requests. Instead, instead of performing a regular HTTP, HTTP request, it's going to perform uh, an AJAX request under the hood. Now, mm -hmm. I, I think we don't use the term AJAX anymore. It's using a more, more modern fetch, uh, mm -hmm. fetch uh, operation under the hood. It's going to fetch the response using an asynchronous, this asynchronous model. And um, instead of replacing the full HTML document, it's only going to replace the body of the page. So mm -hmm. for the head of the page, it's going to kind of, uh, it's going to keep it in place, except unless something changed, because it's going to merge what changed, but unless something changed, it's going to keep the head in place, like okay. uh, untouched, and it's going to replace the body. And just by doing that, it's going to uh, it it speeds uh, navigation up a lot. Okay, it, it offers better sensation. So that's something you you get uh, for free just by installing Turbo, and it's kind of the the basis uh, of of using Turbo because you know uh, by doing that you get. I mean, this is like the developer happiness part of the equation. This is like the maximum developer happiness. But with this, I mean that you don't have to care about dropping a single line of JavaScript and you get something that feels pretty good in terms of responsiveness, okay? That's why I say developer happiness maximized. Mm -hmm. So that's like the backbone of Turbo. Mm. But of course, this is not uh, always enough. It doesn't offer, it, this doesn't always offer like the higher fidelity you want. So Turbo, uh, in 2019, I think it was, introduced two new uh, uh, techniques or technologies in the framework, which is Turbo Stream Actions and Turbo Frames, okay? So um, Turbo Frames, and we, I'm going to show you both working, okay, later, but uh, mm -hmm. to briefly introduce each, uh, Turbo Frames um, are a mechanism so that when you are uh, building uh, a web page, you can declare a turbo frame, which is like a special web component with an ID uh, to define a, a section of the page so that that section defines like a navigation scope so that, for example, if you click on a link within that section, uh, if the server responds uh, with an HTML document that contains the same tur sorry, a similar turbo frame with the same ID, it's going to replace the turbo frame in the page on your behalf. Mm. Okay? So it's, it, it, it lets you update regions of the page 
uh, pretty uh, efficiently, or, or uh, you know, it's it's it's, it's only going to change uh, that part of the page that has changed. Okay, it's only it's only, it's going to only replace that section of the page. Mm. Um, this is very useful for, for example, inline editing of, of stuff. Yeah. And then we have uh, true stream actions, and true stream actions are. Um, True stream actions are meant to uh, perform arbitrary um, changes in the DOM um, in a declarative way. So, okay. in this case, with true stream actions, um, the server, uh, for a given request, the server can um, deliver uh, a fragment of uh, HTML, a true stream action. That is going to uh, respond to a set of preset actions, such as, for example, prepend this HTML or append this HTML or replace this HTML. It's a declarative way of performing arbitrary uh, DOM operations. Okay, and something with true stream actions is that you can use them for replying to requests, or you can also broadcast them through web sockets. Okay, so if mm. something changes in the server. You can broadcast uh, that change as a true stream action, and you can get like the, the user interface <coughs> updated dynamically. Mm -hmm. Nice. <clears throat> so, um, oh, and these are like the the four. Well, actually, there is like since Turbo Eight, there is like a new. Uh, I'm thinking that there is like like a new element here, which is instant click. Yes. Uh, instant click is uh, again something which is completely seamless. Oh, and I haven't talked about morphing. Okay, I'm going to talk next. Okay, but instant click uh, is again something that is completely seamless, and is something that um, when you are moving your mouse around the page and edge overing edge overing uh, links, for example, is going to preload those links under the hood so that when you click them. The response, uh, the update is going to be, uh, is going to feel faster. Okay, mm. so that's something that uh, you don't have to care about. Just enable it. I think it's enabled by default in Turbo Eight now. And I had forgotten to talk about morphing, <laughs> which is the the most uh, special part of all this for for me because it was something I was heavily involved with. Okay, so I mentioned Turbo Stream actions. Uh, perform page updates uh, in a declarative way. Turbo frames define sections that you can update uh, with server side responses. Morphing, page refreshes with morphing is something we introduce in Turbo 8 too. Okay? Uh, it's in this column of maximum developer happiness, which means that it's something seamless, something you don't have to write JavaScript or write server side code to benefit from. Mm -hmm. So this is a technology that um, when you perform an operation, such as, for example, submitting a form, and the server uh, responds with a redirect to the same page you are at right now, in a scenarios where you essentially need to render the current page you are in again, uh, morphing uh, Turbo Morphing kicks in, and what what it what it does is that instead of replacing the body of the page, as I said here, it's going to morph the body of the page with a new body. Morphing uh, means that well, under the hood we are using Idiomorph, which is a library uh, from the uh, HTML X crew. It's a library for performing DOM morphing operations. Morphing means that instead of replacing one thing with other, you mutate or morph uh, the starting state of the DOM uh, with a minimal amount of changes to get it into the desired state of the, of the DOM. Okay? So, for example, uh, if you send two identical uh, DOM trees, but only one title has changed in one node, uh, the morphing library is going to only update that title on your behalf. Okay, what you get with morphing is that you can keep all the screen state in place uh, during page updates, and you get fantastic uh, sensations 
without having to care about how to update specific regions of the script with, uh, sorry, of the screen with JavaScript or, or whatever. Okay, so I think that's a lot to discuss in the abstract. Uh, are you yeah. <laughs> are you following me more or less, or is kind I, of? I am because you know when you're explaining all this, I am trying to map it with um, the things I know, and also of course um, the the things I've heard about, like a live wire from the live ecosystem, and also Phoenix Live View. Because when you mentioned WebSocket, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And um, also instant click. Um, I have this whole consulting arm of my business called Shipless JavaScript, and yeah. I know about prefetching and preloading. And there's also, um, I think there's a tiny package by um, someone from the Chrome team that also help you do that. So when you hover on the link, you're just going to preload it, and so as you click, it just goes instantly. So that's that was actually familiar territory. But the only confusing part are frames, then morphing, which was the last uh, thing you spoke about. So definitely want to see it in action. <laughs> this this old because the cool thing about this is right. Like I use thirty seven signals app, so like getting to see how it's being built and and for from the user's perspective, I already I'm familiar with the apps. But now understanding that okay, this is non SPA and these are the technologies that put it together is just mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, sure. I think that's you know we are going to see things better if we see things working here. Oops, let me remove. Are you seeing like the Chrome here? Uh, yes, maybe? I do see Chrome, but you probably have to zoom in like maybe like three times more so that we could okay. see the console see really the... well. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The I can... console as well. Yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, make yeah. Ha. Huh. Yeah, in business. Can you see that? Okay. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So um. Okay. So this is like a developer, uh, a development version of Hey uh, of the calendar. Okay. okay. This is running in my local machine. Um. And I wanted to show you like several things. Uh, first, like. Well, I have instant click, instant click enabled here. So, for example, um, if if you check the the network uh, mm -hmm. panel here, I'm yeah. h overing this link. So when I do that, it's going to preload the link. So when I click on that, you get like that very fast uh, update, right? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. um, that's a uh, instant click working uh, like that. Okay, um, the other part uh, I wanted to show you is like the body replacement strategy. This is also, uh, this is very interesting to see, I think. So this is, um, this is the inspector with the DOM tree. Uh, this is the head of the page and this is the body of the page. You can see like, for example, if I go to another page, the head gets in place, okay? It doesn't get replaced mm -hmm. because the tree, I mean, you can know this in Chrome because you see this like uh, with a color blink and because this doesn't disappear, okay? If yeah. it was replacing this, it would disappear. Uh, so that's essentially only replacing the body. So if you go to the body and I change the page, yeah, the body mm -hmm. disappears and gets loaded, but the header of the page gets in place. And that's like some kind of a fast navigation you get for free in Turbo, okay? So you create a regular web application with, where the server just renders pages. Uh, you know, when you click on a link, uh, you get you do a get request to the server. The server responds with an HTML document. None of that changes. You, you don't have to care about how things work under the hood. Turbo is doing under the hood this magic where it accelerates and speeds things up. Okay, I think yeah. that's pretty cool, and that's part of the essence of Turbo. So you you get faster link navigation and form submission for free. Okay, so mm. um, we can start with with morphine if you want, which is kind of the um, uh, we are here. So we have seen body replacement, we have seen yeah. instant click. Okay, I'm going to show you how morphine works. Okay, so imagine that. Uh, I'm going to create. Um, well, I'm going to create a new event here. I'm going to use, to call it test event. 
Okay, so uh, I'm going to select this e event in the in the DOM, and I'm going to rename it. Okay, and I want you to pay attention to this part of the screen. So I'm going to rename to the test event two, for example. Um, did you see how that got updated? Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, that's, it's not surprising until you see what happened in terms of uh, requests. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Uh, I'm going to uh, rename it to test event three. Okay, this is the, this is the, um, so read, yeah. This is the post request that is uh, uh, sending the form uh, to update the event. And uh, this is, well, sorry, this was a, a 302 response, which means it's a redirect. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it was a redirect to uh, this page. This page is the current page you are in. It's essentially redirecting back. Yeah, and it, this was like a, a regular. Well, the the redirect is a regular get request to fetch the new HTML. So this essentially downloaded the whole HTML again from the server. Okay, mm -hmm. but instead of uh, instead of replacing everything, it's just updating what changed here, mm -hmm. which is the title, the title attribute, and the content of this yeah. event title. And you know why this is cool. Because you know, do you know why I ended up using this for or thinking of morphing here? Because rendering, uh, updating a calendar is hard. Imagine that instead of saying this, I say, okay, this is going to be I don't know all day, and instead of uh, it's going to span uh, three weeks, okay, or or whatever. So if I click here, uh now I have rendered the event here, and also this row has changed, and this mm -hmm. week has changed too. So imagine if I was doing this with a targeted update, uh, with a targeted update with JavaScript, for example, or I, I would have to imagine I was handling this with JavaScript in the client. Okay, how would you do mm -hmm. this? You would have to have like quite a bit of uh, rendering logic uh, in place to trigger, like to say, yeah. okay, if it's all day, if it's spanning these weeks, I need to invalidate this week. And, you know, some events can, for example, overlap with others. If I have one event here and I say event two here, these two events are overlapping with each other. Uh, there are plenty of conditions uh, to satisfy <laughs> when rendering a calendar. So with this model, the cool thing with this model is that I only have to care about the initial rendering of a screens. Okay, I only have to care about how do I render a week of events or or uh, how with, how do I render each week uh, for the initial rendering of the calendar, and then for any interaction when I update things in this canvas, I can re-render everything again, and a library under the hood is going to update things without losing a scroll position, feeling pretty responsive, keeping a screen state in place, you know? So you combine, you know, the two, uh, you know, this is like the, the whole turbo philosophy is maximizing developer happiness and getting great responsiveness, okay? So, uh, oh, yeah. That's morphing working. Uh, do you have any questions so far? No, it's it's so pretty amazing how this thing works, and the whole mental model and the premise of like HTML first and you know, just updating. You all are having reactivity and everything without the whole what we have to do with with SPA. And I just feel like is this for real? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, a pretty, that's a pretty cool. Uh, yeah, uh, that's. A, I, I love that you see it like that. I, I see it the same way. Like this is for real, but of course, like I mean, uh, something that a disclaimer you have to make here because this is not like uh, something that um, offer the best responsiveness in the world for free. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, of course. 
uh, I mean, if you prepare a targeted update, it's going to be like where you only send like a small fraction of code to perform a change and you perform a very small request to fetch that logic or to fetch only the data you need. I mean, you can make something that is more responsive than this. But mm -hmm. the thing is that you have to keep in mind productivity and developer happiness. Yeah. Developing with this programming model is very, very, um, is very uh, easy, very productive. I wanted to show, like, I'm going to disable uh, Turbo. So if, if, if I disable this morphing technology, oh, wow. okay, I'm going to disable mm -hmm. it's that. Uh, I'm going to remove that from the head of the page. Uh, and I'm going to reload. I just want to show you something, okay? Uh, this is a regular web page that uh, if I create a new event, you're going to see how the scroll jumps, okay? Mm -hmm. Did you see how the scroll uh, jumped? I don't know where yeah. I am because we, I think with the, with the Zoom. Um, but the thing yeah. is that it's, it's, it's a regular web page that is working. Uh, it works, okay? Uh, but uh, it's like a progressive enhancement. And this is very important. Like this is a regular web page that works. You don't have to care about this. Then you enable this and you get this responsiveness for free. Okay, that's the whole uh, philosophy of, of Turbo, I think. Yeah. Um, and one yeah. thing I like from what you just explained is one thing we kind of lack in JavaScript land, right? Because it's an all or nothing game most of the time where if there is no JavaScript, nothing works and i have yeah. been so pissed off by that extreme camp where like things like navigation from moving from pages to pages you still have to use javascript to do navigation i'll be like the browser already knows how to navigate we have the anchor element for a reason right why can't we do that so it's an all or nothing game there is no progressive enhancement and the fact that you can take away turbo and the hey calendar still works it just yeah. feels so mature because, okay, just in case uh, help is not on this page, you could still do the basic business logic. You could still create a calendar, but you're going to have like the foundational experience, like the fundamental experience of page refresh. You're going to jump to the top because, of course, there's no turbo. But when there's turbo, you have an amazing experience. So it is, there's this progressive enhancement to it all that just really, really makes it and make it shine, which we don't have in SPA because SPA is all or nothing and without it like have you visited an sp or an ssr hydration website where the page is loaded but you cannot navigate because the javascript has not loaded yet yeah absolutely and i love that part too it, it kind of makes sense uh to me i mean what you what you have with a single page application is that you can get something that is really really uh responsive I mean, if you do it right, okay, because if we have seen like creating single page applications that load fast, for example, is not trivial at all. And you can see how React, uh, the React crew is still trying to figure out like how to combine server side rendering with uh, traditional client side rendering so that application can both load fast and be responsive and build a cohesive programming model around all that. Uh, the thing is that, yeah. Uh, with, with this, you have like progressive enhancement, uh, which is good. I mean, it's a good philosophy on, on, on its own. Uh, but I also think that it lets you leverage like the best programming model. This is again subjective, it's my opinion. It's like the most productive programming model I know for creating a web application is creating uh, a web application where you just render HTML in the server and uh, you re-render it again uh, on every request you need, it's very, very productive. You can really move very fast with that model, okay? Mm. And then if you have something that adds responsiveness on top of that, for me, it's like, a, yeah, it's an amazing combo or the best combo I know. But again, yeah. we're, we're moving definitely in a subjective uh, territory because no, 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 it's, all, I feel... everything has trade-offs. I mean, yeah, uh... definitely. So... <laughs> Like, I do know there is no perfect paradigm. There's always going to be trade-off. But to the degree of what you're trading off, it has to really make sense for the games, right? Like, in yeah. SPA land, like, I am notorious for being like, I think SPA is hurting how people are used to experiencing software. 
on different levels. Like we have to re reinvent a lot of stuff, a lot of acronyms. We've had server side rendering for like forever, but now it feels like this new thing with hydration. And then there's ISR. There's always a lot of acronyms coming up to just display our rectangles, right? So I feel like trainers are making. <laughs> yeah. We yeah, like the trainers are making. We still have a long way to go. I like I myself. I sort of like moved away from the mainstream onto like something I call the boring JavaScript style because I don't feel it's too exciting. I like JavaScript everywhere, but to a degree, we we don't have to ship all that JavaScript to our users. Like it's powerful, but with great power comes great um, responsibilities as well. So so we need to use it responsibly. But so the only thing, right? Yeah that I've noticed today about this paradigm, which is, I feel like, can benefit from a little bit of improvement, is optimistic UI. So, I'll explain what I mean by that. So, um, for example, on Twitter, if I click the like button, even though this, the page is going to request to the server, and you know, okay, Kelvin has liked this post, the UI updates immediately because it's sort of like, you know what, this is the happy path, this may be successful 80% of the time. So let's just update it. So today now, I feel like it might be like, so you, um, you have to correct me if I'm wrong. So for interactions that are not making server-side um, requests at the beginning, or it's like we want instant feedback, how do you do that? So for example, if um, so, so if I click the, the two, so I have a lot of habits on my phone, and let's say I have like yeah. a slow internet, it takes a couple of milliseconds, more than 200 milliseconds for it to update. I feel like this is because it's all server centric. So it's going to try to go to the server, then get the state, then come back. Is that the case or am I missing it all? I think it, uh, um, if you're talking about the mobile, the iOS app, I think it's that's handled. I, I'm not, I, I'm not okay. really sure if it's handled okay. uh, natively or not. Uh, mm. In the in the web is kind of optimistic. In the in the web is like because oh. this is just like a checkbox with CSS, but it's like a, it's like a, that's not like a it's more like a side effect or a consequence of how we design it. That's something very very intentional. But okay. yeah, I know what you what you mean. I mean, optimistic design is super interesting. The problem is that depending on the interaction, uh, you need to depending on the interaction, you need to probably handle the rendering on the client and handling the rendering on the client is not comes with a lot of baggage uh, mm -hmm. you know if, if you need to if the rendering yeah, logic is not trivial like then you have like how do you download the code that handles the rendering and is uh, does that need to be synced with some kind of server side rendering code or is mm -hmm. like everything are, are you going to have to duplicate code? Um, I don't know. I, I have yeah. a. I, by the way, I, I can uh, throw here, throw there that uh, I wrote an article which is escaping the single page application rabbit hole uh, <laughs> with with modern Rails. I wrote that in 2018, I believe. So, but I, I kind of went through a lot of problems I was seeing with single page applications because I. I I had to spend like a bunch of years uh, dealing with uh, heavy JavaScript applications on the on the client, so I was kind of burned out about the paradigm. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. I think that a lot of the problems I discussed there are totally valid today. But the optimistic yeah. UI thing is super interesting. I, I agree yeah, that I, I I love the you know the kind of absolutely instant responsiveness on a given interaction is like amazing, and it, it's certainly yeah. uh, so the ideal. I just try because. Most times, you know, if I'm doing my exercises or reading a book, I am not on my laptop. And you are absolutely right because on the web or even like the desktop app, which is like, I feel it's like the web too, the click is instantaneous. Yeah. That's, I think then there is no drawback because I was thinking, okay, maybe it's because of this paradigm. So maybe this is like a mobile thing. I don't know how. So let's leave the mobile line. Well, talking about web here, but the click is instantaneous. And that is just amazing because I feel like you have checked all the boxes, but you are non SPA. Where is the drawback? Yeah, to this I, magic? I, I, I can show you like a couple of uh, very quickly, like the other um, two 
elements working here, like Turbo Stream Actions and Turbo Frames. Uh, so when you are adding, uh, so in the calendar, you can add to-dos. So you, I can mm -hmm. add a to-do here by typing to-do, pressing enter, and you have the to-do there. So in this case, we are not using morphing, okay? We are okay. not using morphing because we want this to feel like snappier, faster. We want to keep the cursor in place like so that you can type several things without uh, seeing uh, any, uh, any drag or any delay. So mm -hmm. we are using Turbo Streams for that, and I can show you how they work. Uh, so if we, if we go to the network uh, request here, uh, I'm typing some to do here. So this is like the, this is the, again, the post request creating the to do. Uh, I wanted to show you the response here. The response is this Turbo Stream, uh, this Turbo Stream HTML fragment, okay, or, or, or component or web component. It's like a custom web component. Mm. And this is essentially saying, okay, it's going to execute the before, which means insert before uh, uh, action, and it's going to insert this template. So this is essentially, this is like what you see, what the browser sees. If we want to go to the code, uh, I can go to the titles uh, controller. This is Rails. This is uh, the 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 controller, the Rails controller dealing with um, the titles. And um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the to do. Sorry, I was I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want to go to the to dos controller. To dos of controller course. because we we are creating a to do. Mm -hmm. So. Essentially, you say, okay, we can, this is the create action. We say, okay, we, this, we are creating the to-do in the database. And we say, okay, we are going to respond with a turbo stream. Okay, we can respond, reply to, with a regular redirection if we need to. Sorry, not, not if we need to. If the client doesn't support turbo, oh. which is not realistic, but if the client doesn't support turbo, we are going to use a redirect. But if, if it does support turbo, we are going to respond with turbo stream. Okay, so this is essentially this is not really exercise in practice, but uh, we tend to do that like uh, because we think it's is a good practice. Nice. Uh, so if we go to the uh, to the Turbo Stream action, which is here, create dot Turbo Stream dot ERB. So this is the essentially this is uh, ERB code Rails code. We are de declaring the Turbo Stream, and here. This is the interesting part. We are saying, okay, we are going to respond with this Turbo Stream. It's going to insert before this ID. It's going to insert this content, and this content is rendering uh, this template, this Rails template with a to do. But the point is that this is reusing, the, reusing the server side code we use for the initial rendering of to do. Okay, mm -hmm. so we are reusing code in the server. So this is a way of replying from the server uh, to a request with high responsiveness, okay, with high responsiveness uh, without compromising, I mean, with a good uh, productivity level because we can reuse, we don't have to duplicate things in the client and in the server, okay? It, it, everything lives in the server. We are querying the database, we are uh, inserting in the database and we are synchronously rendering some HTML. We can reuse from the initial rendering of the page. So it's still quite productive, okay? Even when it's not, it's not as seamless as smorphing or instant click or body replacement, but it's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good programming model that offers great responsiveness. And just for, uh, do you have any question here, Kelvin? Um, no, no, no. You, I think it, it makes a lot of sense, you know, no okay. questions on this end, really. Like, I'm just taking all this in. I'm trying to, like, I feel like you all are... So, I think one thing I want you to touch on a little bit is instant click because I really want to see how it works. But with sure. frames, I feel at a certain point, right, the entire web dev industry, most of it, is all that, you know, if you're going to do anything that is not a full page refresh, you have to send back JSON and let your client side framework Pick the HTML. But with this model, you're sending HTML fragments already baked. Exactly. And it's just replace it. It's just 
This this exactly. is this is the rebirth. <laughs> this is crazy. It's interesting. <laughs> it's completely different to the, the paradigm yeah. you, you are used to, right? Yeah, like so I so the ingredient of Jason, it just feel like an unnecessary pre-step to because the user don't want to see Jason. You're the one who cares about the Jason. They just care about the HTML. So if we could still do the same morphing and diffing of the DOM and replacing stuff in place and send back HTML over the wire instead of JSON to be serialized and deserialized and baked. You just skip a lot of steps and just get to the point. Exactly. Yeah, that's, a, that's the whole point. You skip a lot of steps and, and you... Um, so the problem with you are rendering JSON in the client, there are several problems. One of them is that you need a mechanism. So first of all, you need to download all the code that is going to do the rendering, which is in a real application that's kind of challenging how to download all that JavaScript bundle mm -hmm. um, to, to do all the handling you need to do on the client, which is not trivial, how to do that uh, load fast. But then you need to uh, also solve like a, a problem is, is how do I fetch all the data I need for this screen in an efficient way? Mm. So that's how, that's how things like GraphQL uh, came to life. Like, uh, uh, or one of the use cases for GraphQL is to offer an efficient mechanism. So instead of performing 17 different uh, REST requests for fetching data here and there, which is not optimized, I'm going to perform a single very efficient query, which is going to download the three customers, the two invoices, and the whatever I need for this very specific screen or interaction. The thing is that all taking care of all those things is incredibly complex. GraphQL is complex. The initial, uh, you know, preparing JavaScript so that you can respond to things responsibly, but also that you can do an initial rendering of the page very fast is very challenging. Then you have the rehydration paradigm React server components with different APIs compared to the client side components. All of those, all that complexity, you can remove that complexity from your plate fully and just care about, okay, I'm in the server. In the server, the database is. So, um, yeah, the last part I wanted to show you was the turbo frames. Uh, the turbo, I think that the, the part that we haven't seen, I can show you those very quickly. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, the Hey Calendar, you know that uh, we have, um, you can add titles like uh, mm -hmm. today's. You can say, okay, this is uh, my birthday or whatever and things like that. So how we do that is with turbo frames, okay? Um, mm -hmm. If you, uh, if, if I go to the inspector, like you can see here how, well, here I have a turbo frame, okay, defined. This is wrapping the link. This is a turbo frame with a certain ID, turbo frame component, and inside I have the link. And the link is opening um, this, uh, this link, which is essentially, I'm going to click it just for you to see the network request. Uh, I'm going to click it. And this is the, uh, mm. when you click the link, this is getting, uh, guess what? Like an, an HTML document. <laughs> and the HTML document, the only content it has is the turbo frame. Uh, the turbo frame contents with the form for editing the die title. Mm. Okay. So uh, how we do that in the server, uh, this is in the data titles controller, uh, which is, I think, here. So, for example, when we are going to render the new, the new action, which is the action that renders the, the form, uh, here we have the turbo frame tag with the form inside and uh, the ID that we are going to use to, to match uh, the turbo frame we are editing. So essentially what you get is like, okay, I click here, I get the form, I press enter. Uh, the responsiveness is really good. Uh, what you're getting under the hood is very small HTML documents that are only interchanging the turbo frame. But if turbo, if we were not using turbo, and we were using um, 
uh, regular HTTP requests, you know, in the server, other than rendering a turbo frame, I'm not really doing anything else. Like this is not, for example, in the server, I don't know that there is even a turbo frame here in the, in the, in the controller. But mm -hmm. Rails under the hood is very smart and says, okay, because this is a turbo frame request that, uh, you know, there is a request header that identifies that it's a turbo frame request here. There is like a header in the, in the server, in the client that uh, it injects a header so that it identifies that request like a uh, special turbo frame request. The server responds with a very optimized payload that only includes the turbo frame. Okay, but if it, mm -hmm. if that wasn't the case, if the if the client wasn't using turbo, it will it will just re respond with a regular HTML page with a full uh, HTML document uh, that it will still work. Okay, so it's again like a seamless server side uh, way of getting good responsiveness. Okay, another mechanism that turbo offers for for increasing the responsiveness of your application uh, with a pretty good developer happiness. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's Turbo. I mean, we have seen, we have covered a lot. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 you were, yeah, you wanted to see instant click working. Yeah, that's easy to see. Like, yes. Even, even here, like, for example, uh, check the, the day, okay? You can, if I place the mouse over this number, the Thursday, mm -hmm. the 29th, uh, you can see how this got loaded under the hood, right? Yeah. Uh, did you see that? So now if I click, the navigation yeah. is very fast. So if I go back again, if I click, can you see how, uh, I'm going to click on the 27th uh, mm -hmm. or, or the, yeah, to 29 again. Okay, you're going to see how this, uh, the fetch appears before I click. So I'm going up, I go here and I click, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, as you can see, it, it preloads the link before you click it. And uh, in practice, it's kind of a workaround to offer better sensations or, you know, more responsive uh, response. Yeah, it's it's almost feeling like an SPL-like client-side routing, but without the whole having like a framework and the uh, on the yeah. client swapping the pages. It's really nice. And one cool thing about this, like you showed me the, the turbo header, it's like you all are leveraging existing boring and stable technologies to do this. And so for this instant click, which what is really driving this? Is it um, like a meta tag or how, how does it work high level? Well, it's actually, it's enabled by default. Uh, so you just, by installing Turbo, you get that. Uh, wow. So <laughs> whenever there is a link, it's going to work. So actually, I think that the way you once, I mean, you can disable it globally. You can say, okay, I don't want to use instant click at all. Or you can also like uh, use a data attribute in links to say, okay, don't handle this link with uh, instant click. I don't remember the, syn the syntax. I think it's that data pref prefetch equal false or something like that. Data turbo mm -hmm. prefetch equal false or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's the only API, I think. Um, nice. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Like, this is really, really cool. Yeah, actually, for example, I was noticing that uh, when you go to, um, if, if, if I'm going to set some title, <laughs> you can see how before clicking, you can see how it's fetching the new. Mm -hmm. So the new there, so when I click, it's absolutely instant. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And it, I don't remember the name of the author of Instant Click. It's not from Thirty Seven Signals. It was it was someone in the community, and but but he really it's a it's a fantastic contribution, and it's totally in the spirit of Turbo of enhancing how the web works without uh, you know touching the programming model. I love that. I love not having to care about JavaScript or APIs or methods or special markup. I I, I love getting things for free, you know? And mm -hmm. Instant Click is totally that. It's like you get faster navigation for free. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I think so too. It is amazing. It is really, yeah. really amazing. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jorge. This is, this is good to have this refresh because even if, like I said, I'm not in mainstream traditional SPA world, I still try to build SPAs with something called inertia. 
and with like sales, which is like rules but for Node.js. And I still have this whole monolithic because with your model, right, which is one thing I like, is you don't have an API. You don't necessarily need an API, but with SPA, if you're going to do anything non-trivial, non-demo app, you're going to have to maintain a, like an API and all that kind of stuff. You know, use your GraphQL or whatever thing you use to fetch data. But with this model, since HTML is the mechanism for communication, you don't really need an API because you just want majestic monolith like yeah like um david would like to say so this is good this is good stuff yeah yeah so but... yeah um any other final words you would like like to give in like uh in turbo 8 so you've demoed this to click on morphine what else did it bring to like this new update um uh, sorry can you repeat the question yeah, so what is new in Turbo 8 again? Because I know that instant click was okay, okay. in Turbo 8 and Morphin. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Turbo 8 had Morphin, uh, instant click. I think those two were the big ones. Also, view transitions. So um, in CSS, um, um, you, you have like this. Um, it's not CSS, it's a web technology where you can uh, define how. Uh, uh, one page transition into another, and how yeah. to animate some elements yeah. of one page. View uh, transition. How to? Yeah, view transition. Yeah. So Turbo offers support for view transitions. Oh like, wow! There is like some minimal API for using view transitions over there. There are a bunch of uh, tweaks and, and improvements, uh, but I think those three were like the main the main features. I don't mm. know if I'm forgetting about something, but I think yeah, those three are the main features. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. So Thank I'm definitely you. gonna go read up on the philosophy. Like, like at the ethos, I think there's so much I could learn from this all, and this is really good. So I think yeah, you could stop sharing your screen, then we could just wrap up. Sure, with, sure, um, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I will. Let me see if I can uh, stop sharing here. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, thank you. This was really educational. It was a refresher from everything I I'm working with, <laughs> and to see like how my favorite apps like the hey calendar and i think of course hey email will be built the same way and also basecamp is being built it's really really fun so um yeah any final words generally like programming your journey like any advice for like um, what do you want to say <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know uh well, thank you so much for, for having me uh because i think i didn't say that it was uh really fun um uh yeah if people want to to reach out i'm uh, i have a personal homepage which is jorgemanrubia.com uh sincerely my name.com uh you can see my twitter handle or my i i like to write a lot uh so i mm. you can in my personal page you can see my uh my blog posts and you can subscribe to to them by email in my hey world and um uh nothing else like uh, i would encourage people to you know, explore Rails, Turbo, Hey, anything that we've seen uh, here. If someone wants to reach out or send me an email, I'm always happy to reply. I always reply sooner or later. So, uh, yeah, uh, nothing else. Thank you so much for, yeah, for having sure. me, Kevin. Um, thank you for coming. One thing I like about the folks at 37 Signal is you guys have a healthy writing culture. And mm. it's it's always... Because I've read your Hey World as well. Of course, David is always writing and Jason as well. I just like the way it flows, living from the top, and everyone is like a great writer. Like, it's just amazing. And I really love that culture. I, I think David and how you guys write at his own signal has also influenced how I write and how I like express. Because anytime I get to see your public, um, your message board or announcement is just so detailed like from different people not david or jason just like employees or uh, people doing this stuff they're just so detailed i love it so i'm going to commend you all you all deserve a medal for like uh, <laughs> the most um the healthy writing culture in any tech company because it's just amazing so thank you all hey i am going to share links to your website your twitter and any other links you want me to share just send it over and I'll add it to the description this was fun I love it, and I am hoping to see you all at the Reels World. I don't write Reels, but I love the ecosystem. I love what you are building, but 
I'm really looking forward to, to coming to Toronto, right? I think it's September. Yeah, in Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward. So hopefully if you're there, we get to hang out in person and all. So this will be fun. That will be nice. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, so Let's thank see you. If we can meet yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, for sure. Thank you so for much. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Take care.